So in the previous video, we went after the English sparrow, which is an invasive species. And we went after that bird with the FX wild catch, which was perfect for the job. Um, got about 60 shots per fill, spare magazines to give us extra shots and a really nice gun for walk and stalk shooting. We're gonna be going after the geese now. We're gonna finish off exactly where we left off because we have seen quite a few geese around on this farm, both Egyptian geese and spurwing geese. Um, and they're both really good eating. So if we can get one or two of those birds, it'll be really great. We've only got about two or three hours of, of sunlight left, so we're not gonna diddle daddle. We're gonna get straight to it. Let's go do this. Now, if there's one species in the world that I can call my nemesis animal, it is definitely the Egyptian goose. I had a fair amount of success when I first started hunting them on this property, but as time has gone on, they have really wised up and just will not allow me anywhere near them. There are many geese in the area, but what makes it so difficult to shoot them with an air gun is that they tend to land right in the middle of large open fields way out of my range. They have very sharp eyes and the moment I try to sneak in any closer, they start running like Usain Bolt and eventually take flight. So to be honest with you, I wasn't too confident about my chances today, but I decided to bring the camera crew with just in case and as you'll see as the episode moves along, we were really in for a great evening of hunting. We walk from field to field and when I get an opportunity on a lone goose early on, I take it with both hands. Perfect headshot, 40 meters. I just put the crosshairs right on the top of his head to allow for about a 0.2 mil dot drop and just went straight through his brain and he, he went straight down. Completely humane shot. Most people think um, shooting big game birds like that with an air rifle is inhumane. I'm going for headshots here. These pellets go straight through the head, destroy the brain instantly and the bird goes straight down. If I was taking a body shot, I don't think it would be humane. But I'm only going for headshots and as you can see on the footage it does the job perfectly and instantly I can see the blood coming from his head which means I got him exactly where I was aiming for let's take a look at this see it's a nice nice big full-size goose Egyptian goose extremely happy with that it was a 40 meter shot from the, the, the fence at the end of the end of the garden here I just just took a sitting shot rest the gun on the fence got him right there in the head. See all the blood there. It's a small target to aim for but one thing about the geese is that once they stand still they keep their heads still. Um, birds like guinea fowl for example are constantly moving their heads back and forward and um, the geese aren't like that. The geese tend to keep their heads quite still. Um, so it is a small small target to aim for but if you can get the head then you're pretty much guaranteed to put the bird down no matter what air gun you're using. Nice, Wildcat's done its job perfectly. Um, I must say this is a really nice gun to shoulder, really nice gun to rest. Very happy with that. Let's go take him back. It's an absolutely fantastic start to the evening, but before we move on with the hunt, let's take a moment to talk about the gun I'm using today. So you saw me come out here last time with the Impact, and the Impact is probably my choice gun at the moment if I'm going to be taking a lot of shots. Um, the, the shot count on that gun is crazy because it's got that big carbon fiber bottle. But if I want to do walking around like we, we're doing today, we're doing a lot of walking, then the Wildcat is absolutely perfect because I fitted these sling studs on the, on the gun here and it's such a nice gun to sling over your shoulder because the weight is all the way back. A lot of the times you'll put slings on a, a long rifle and you'll put it over your shoulder and because of all the weight on the, the barrel and the cylinder, it'll kind of slump back like that and it's awkward to carry. This is the, the nicest gun I've ever had to, to sling over my shoulder. Another really Nice thing that I like about this gun um, is the whole magazine system. Like the Impact, it's really nice to load. It's got the cocking lever up front, um, but this has an eight shot magazine as opposed to 18 shots on the Impact. So what I did was I got these two um, lovely little magazine holders from, from Air Effective Tuning in, in the UK. 
um, they basically attach to the, the rail here and you can keep your spare magazine. So if you've got spare magazines from FX, which you can buy as separate parts, then you just slot them in here and you can easily, easily switch them out. There's no funny lever like you've got in the Cricut. You just cock the gun, pull the magazine out, put your spare in and you're ready to go. So I've got 24 shots here um, without having to reload the magazines, which is really nice. Perfect for what we're doing today. We continue on and for quite some time, the geese just seem to be very, very scarce. One of the best things about this particular farm, however, is that even if there isn't any hunting happening, there is always something interesting to see. This is the kivet, one of the most iconic birds in South Africa. And what makes these birds so interesting is the way that they protect their eggs. A kivet will almost always lay her eggs right in the middle of an open grassland or an open field where they are completely exposed, but they have a really clever way of looking after them. If a predator approaches, the kivet will leave the nest and lure the predator away, often pretending to have a broken wing. This keeps the predator distracted and the eggs safe. It's really clever and it's absolutely great to have these birds around. Right, it's been really tough on the geese, uh, like we expected. We got that, we got that first Egyptian goose, but all the other geese we've, we've tried to take shots at, uh, they, they've, they know that we're here and they just fly off very quickly. So I doubt we're going to have more success today. Um, if we don't, we'll call it a day and you know, just have to come back another day. But we're going to probably give it another half an hour or so, see if we can get anything before we head home. And if we do, it'll be a real bonus. Well, persistence pays off as we round a corner and come face to face with an absolute monster of a spurwing goose. I'll set up for the shot as quickly as possible and just watch how this one plays out. I just shot the biggest animal that I've ever shot with the smallest gun I've ever shot with. Straight through the head and he dropped on the spot. Could not wish for anything better. What a way to end the day. I mean, I've seen these geese around, but I've never been able to get this close on them. This is something really special. Let me go pick him up. Oh my goodness, that was amazing. Oh my word, look at the size of this thing. Take a look at this, all right. So this is the Wildcat. You know the Wildcat's a fairly small gun, but it's a gun nonetheless. Look at the size of this thing's wing. If I extend the wing out here, that wing is a lot bigger than the gun itself. That is crazy. And this gun just put it down so easily, got it through the brain and he dropped on the spot, you know, uh, flapped around a bit like, like you normally see with, with headshots, but he went straight down. Now, here's an interesting fact for you. The spurwing goose is actually the biggest species of goose in the world. Um, some people think the Canada goose is the biggest. I've done my research. Uh, this is actually the biggest species of goose in the world. And it's called the spurring because it has these sparks or spurs on the tips of, on the tips of its wing. So you do not want to get on the, on the wrong side of one of these geese. Um, some people keep them on their properties and they're really good, say like, guard dogs but guard geese because they are very territorial and they'll chase you off and they'll they'll flap around and, and hit you with these sparks but look at the size of this thing it's absolutely massive so we're going to take this one home we're going to cook him up and we're going to eat him very happy with that right i would call that a definite success um it's just two animals but man they're good animals to get and they both taste really good. So I'm gonna go home, cook those up for supper. I'm tired now, it's been a long day, but uh, I definitely enjoyed that and I'll definitely be back for more. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.